Are you considering upgrading to one of the new M1 Macs and having trouble deciding between the 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM? Well, if you're a Final Cut user, I ran some tests to see the differences between the two to help you decide. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Serge and welcome back to my channel. Last week, I tested the base model M1 Mac Mini with 8 gigabytes of RAM against the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro and a 2015 15 inch model. I tested all three models to see how well they performed editing video in Final Cut Pro. If you haven't seen the video, the $700 Mac Mini was about 10 times faster than the 2015 model and performed just as good and sometimes even better than the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes of RAM and an upgraded video card. Today, I'm going to run the same tests on two Mac Minis, one with 8GB of RAM and another one upgraded to 16GB, just to see how much difference, if any, there is between the two of them. To run these tests, I'll be using the same library as in my last video. I made two copies of this exact same Final Cut Pro library with a variety of clips with different video resolutions, frame rates and so on. The clips I use are mostly highly compressed HEVC clips from an iPhone or a GoPro. Nothing extreme like 8K or high bitrate footage from some of today's newest cameras. All libraries are stored on the internal drives with no optimizer proxy media and background render turned off so no render files. First up is timeline performance test. I have an HD project in my timeline set to 30 frames per second and I added a variety of clips to my timeline. As you can see, any clips with a different resolution or frame rate need to be rendered. Playing these back without rendering Neither machine had any issues. Both could play back all the clips in real time without missing any frames. I also tried retiming some clips, layering 4K clips on top of each other and adding a split screen plugin so all are visible at the same time, adding adjustment layers with a bunch of effects, even 3D titles. Both Mac Minis played back my timeline flawlessly without needing to render any files. If you watched my last video, the 8GB Mac Mini finally had a tiny hiccup when I added an animated transition between multi-layered clips. The 16GB model also skipped a frame or two here, so once again, the timeline performance is very similar between these two machines. Next up is exporting and rendering speeds. Just like in my previous video, I used a 16 minute dummy project. For this project, I used a variety of clips with different video resolutions, frame rates, added adjustment layers with multiple effects and color corrections, retime clips, added 3D titles, layer clips, basically whatever I could do to make these computers work. In my first test, I exported an unrendered version of this project as an Apple ProRes 422 file. My base model Mac Mini, with only 8GB of RAM, exported this 60 minute project in 9 minutes and 23 seconds. The Mac Mini with upgraded RAM exported the same project slightly faster, coming in at 9 minutes and 18 seconds, about 1% faster. The Mac Mini with 16GB of RAM was faster, but not by very much. Next up was rendering the same project. The base model Mac Mini with 8GB of RAM rendered this project in 8 minutes and 58 seconds. Once again, rendering the same project on the upgraded Mac Mini was slightly faster at 8 minutes and 56 seconds. Just like before, it was faster but not by much. With my test project rendered, I did an export test again. The base model Mac Mini exported the rendered version of this project in 4 minutes and 48 seconds. The 16GB model exported the same project about 4% faster, exporting my project in 4 minutes and 38 seconds. Once again, not much difference. My next test was to convert this project to vertical video using the Smart Conform feature to test out the neural engine. Since both these Macs have the same neural engine, the times are very similar. The 8GB model converted my project to vertical video in 27 seconds. And the 16GB version converted the same project slightly faster, doing it in only 26 seconds. Both these being much faster than Intel based Macs. So here's my takeaways from this. First of all, any of the new M1 Macs are amazingly fast. If you see my last video, a $700 Mac Mini performed just as good, if not better, as a much more expensive Intel based MacBook Pro that's not even one year old. But should you upgrade the RAM when you buy one? The short answer is if you can afford to, then yes. You won't see much better performance when using Final Cut Pro, but for multitasking or using apps that haven't been optimized for a new M1 chip, 
The extra memory will improve your Mac's performance. And once you buy your Mac, that's what you're stuck with. You can't just upgrade your memory later when you need it. So to future-proof your purchase, if you can, go with 16 gigabytes of RAM. If you already bought an M1 Mac with only 8 gigabytes of RAM, or simply can't afford to upgrade the memory, don't sweat it. Even the base models with 8 gigabytes of RAM are amazingly fast, and unless you're a power user, will be more than enough. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button or in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, check out my other video to see how the new M1 Mac Minis performed against a much more expensive 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro and an older 2015 15-inch model. I'll link the video in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week.